What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and uh, today we're going to be talking about SLED's new process uh, for sending in for a CWP. Uh, they are still allowing the old process of the ink fingerprints, filling out all the paperwork and mailing it in, uh, but they've also changed that a little bit uh, to make things go a little bit faster. So some are still doing it the old way, some like myself are doing it the new way because it has cut down on some of the classroom time and it has also sped up the uh, turnaround time for you uh, getting your CWP. So what I'm gonna go over now is how you're going to set all that up. everybody like I said we're gonna be talking about the uh, new process for sending in for a new CWP and we're also going to be talking about how to renew it and how to get a re replacement uh, these are all very simple processes now uh, everything is pretty much done online for the vast majority uh, for my new people you do still have to come in and take the class before you can go in and get everything processed online like what I'm about to show you all right, so you still have to come take the class. There is no way around it. All right, if you're going somewhere where they're there telling you to take it online and then you can send in for it, that is incorrect. That is not for this state. There are some states that do recognize that. We are not one of those. And the same thing that the NRA offers. All right, for us, that's really going to be kind of a uh, pre-class to the class. All right, so we do not recognize the online stuff for South Carolina. You do still have to come in and take the class. If you want to get mad at anybody, get mad at SLED. All right, I'm just the messenger here on this, just trying to help everybody out. So I'm going to step out of the way, and you're going to see how we're going to get started. First thing you do is you will go to SLED's website, and then you will go over to the concealed weapons permit side of that website. Uh, or if you just go on to Google, SLED space CWP it will bring you right here to this page okay once you get to this page it's the second option so it might be hard to see on camera I apologize I tried to get it as close as I can without making it look goofy but it says right here CWP new renewal or replacement process when you come to, to renew it or you need a replacement you always come back here unless you save Identigo's webpage. If you are not familiar with, with Identigo, they do fingerprints for everybody that's not military, law enforcement, and things like that. Okay, so come here, or when you get to Identigo the first time you fill it out, save their page as a favorite. I'm going to show you that here shortly. But that is who SLED is partnered with to do your fingerprints. They'll scan all your paperwork and they send everything electronically to SLED. That's what has sped some of this turnaround time up. So once you click on this link, it's going to bring you here all right all this down here is pretty much explaining to you what I've just explained to you about their new process all right that's what this is so if you're coming to me and I you called me and this is how I told you you're doing it you talk to somebody and they're telling you no this is wrong they are wrong all right if they're not a CWP instructor they don't know what they're talking about all right this is a valid legitimate process that they have put in place and the reason I have moved to it it is cut down on the again the class time and the turnaround time so as you can see here you will click this big link that says Identigo once you click on that it will take you over to Identigo's web page this is what you want to save as a favorite unless you want to start with SLED's website and click through the links. If you save this as a favorite, then all you got to do is come right here when it comes time to renew it or replace it. For a new one, you're going to select new CWP application. There's a little radio button right there you'll highlight. You'll hit go down in the bottom corner here. Then you need to read these questions, answer them truthfully, which they should be yeses. All right, don't answer yes because I said that. Read them, answer them truthfully. Yes, 
initials in the box there, hit go in the bottom corner. Right here is where you will start to set your appointment and you will also fill out the application. So if you're going to somebody that they're still fingerprinting you and filling out the application, you won't be doing any of this. You'll be mailing everything in. You'll be filling out all the paperwork in class. Right here, don't search by region. If you search by region, it's just going to bring all of them up for your region. It won't sort them for you. I would recommend doing it by zip code. All right, punch in your zip code. You'll hit go. When you do that, it will sort them off the zip code that you entered closest to furthest, going down the list. All right, so when I first did this, I was at an Anderson zip code. I put in that. So there is a location in Anderson. There's a location in Easley. Apparently, the one in Abbeville is even closer than what the one in Greenville. But now, if you notice, you see a lot of closed up through here. Okay? The reason you see that on these locations, they're part-time locations. They're not always open. All right, their main location is in Greenville, up off of Orchard Park, right up from the Haywood Mall. If you've been to, if you're local here and you've been to local Q, that's where it is. But if you're just coming here to do the class, when you punch in your zip code, it will bring up a location for your zip code. There are locations all over this state. All right, I've even known some that have been going on vacation and they're traveling here locally in the state. They'll set it for wherever they're going on vacation and do their fingerprints and everything there. So whatever city, county that you do your class in, you don't have to do your fingerprints in that same city or county. You can go wherever you want to in the state. All right, but Greenville for us and where I'm located in the upstate of South Carolina, Greenville's the main location. All right, Orchard Park is what it says, but if you go up Haywood Road, go over the bridge over 385, there's a little strip mall down to your right. It's right down in there. That's why I mentioned local Q. If you know where local Q is, I think it goes across the parking lot. Now you'll see here it says schedule full or closed. But what you're looking for is right here where it says click to schedule. It'll be a blue link. So if you see that on any one of these other locations, click on it and you can set your appointment. Once you click on click to schedule, it'll bring up all the times that they've got available. Select your time, hit go. This is where you will start the application. Now it'll be all one page for you, but I've got it blown up so I can let everybody see it when I'm doing the class and going over this. Now, your applicant name, that must match your driver's license. However your name is on your driver's license is how it will go in the applicant name. So what I mean is if you're a junior, senior, second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, whatever, and they, didn't, they were stupid and left that off your driver's license like I've had them do to some people, don't put that on here. This top part here must match your license, the applicant name. Now, applicant alias or maiden name. For my ladies that are married, that's where your maiden names will go. Okay? Also, ladies and gentlemen, the alias. All right, they're now they're not looking for what your buddies call you. All right, scooter, pooter, skeeter, whatever. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking for anything other than your first or your middle name. How you introduce yourself to people is what I tell everybody. All right, so my legal first name is Christopher. I don't go by that. That's not how I introduce myself. Everybody knows me as Chris. So for my alias, I would put Chris and then my last name. Now, my first middle name, Christopher Justin. Look, see, y'all are learning too much about me. I need to stop. So let's say everybody called me CJ, and I introduced myself as CJ. CJ and then my last name. Anything other than your first or your middle name. So if you're Michael, you go by Mike. Daniel, you go by Dan. All right, Sh Michelle, you go by Shelly. Um, what's some of the other... Oh, Lord, I can't think of any other female names out there. Let's say Stephanie, and you go by Steph, and that's how you introduce yourself to everybody. That is what goes there. Not if just your work crew calls you Steph or CJ or something like that. How you introduce yourself to everybody is your alias if it's different than your first or your middle name. Okay? Moving on, the next part will be your address. Okay, top part, your qualifying address must be a physical address. If your mailing address is different, of course, it will go down here. If not, check same as qualifying. Now, if you notice, it says non-resident. So if you are a non-resident of South Carolina, but you own property or a home here in this state, it's your name on the deed, 
you were able to come into this state and get a non-resident permit. Okay, that's why you have resident of South Carolina, non-resident. The difference here, if you are a non-resident, there's a few states that won't recognize the non-resident and it will recognize the resident. All right, you can find that all back on SLED's website, but you are able to come into the state and get a non-resident as long as you own property, not rent property. You have to own it. Your name has to be on the deed. There is paperwork that you have to take to the tax assessor for your area, and they have to fill that out before you submit the paperwork. Okay? Next part, you have to put in a phone number. All right, there's little red stars all over required information. You do have to put in a phone number. You have to select a preferred contact method, a preferred method of CWP renewal notification. You do not have to put in an email unless you select email in one of these two boxes. Now, for the renewal notification, I would recommend selecting email. All right, if you want to know why I come into the class, I'll go over that, but I don't want to make this video too long. So here, select email, put in a good email address. Then the rest of it's usual stuff. Date of birth, gender, height, weight, race, ethnicity, hair color, eye color, place of birth, citizenship, social, driver's license, all that good stuff. If um, you are from another country, this is where you, it says alien registration number, but I think it's called um, United States Custom and something ID. I can't remember. It's a nine digit number. Uh, that's where that will go right there if you're curious about that. Height, weight, air color, eye colors, things like that. That doesn't necessarily have to match your license because I know it could have changed since the last time you had your license renewed or took a picture, all that good stuff. The main thing is your name and address have to match. Name and address have to match your driver's license. If you're about to move, I would wait on this process because then what's going to happen is you'll have to get a replacement. When you were done filling everything out, hit send information. If you hit send information and it brings you back to this page, go through and look for these red exclamation marks. That means you missed something that is required to be filled out. Now, if it doesn't kick you back, after you hit send information, you're gonna go through here and select one of these. All right, disabled veteran, retired former military, active military, retired law enforcement, active law enforcement, none of the above. All right, if it'll, you will select whatever applies to you. Now for the vast majority, it's probably gonna be none of the above. You'll hit go. This is information on why you have to come in and take the class. You don't receive any of this information until you come and take the class, okay? So the date training completed, your student number, we'll go over that in class, you will know what to do when you see this video. And then my information and my certification number, you will not get that until you come in and take the class. Okay, once that all is filled out, hit go. Then it's gonna tell you what you need to take with you. So depending on what you selected, it's gonna tell you right here everything you're gonna to need to take with you. So of course, it'll be the checklist. All right, you won't get the checklist till you come in and do the class. Then you have to take your driver's license, some form of second identification, passport, birth certificate, social security card, voter registration card, or a utility bill with your name and address. Cell phone's not a utility, they will not take that. Uh, the other thing, they will take another government issued ID, not a student ID. It cannot be a student ID, it has to be another government issued ID. So like if you got an ID card before you got your driver's license, they will accept something like that. Um, military ID, retired military ID, things like, it has to be another government issued ID. Then you, uh, I've already went over the checklist. You will have three years from today's date, or I shouldn't say today's date, you will have three years from the date you take the class to submit this paperwork. Yes, you have three years before you have to submit this paperwork. Now, from here, when you hit go, it'll walk you through the payment process. Now, for security reasons, they would not let me do screenshots of that, even though I didn't have any information in there, but if you bought anything off the internet before, no different. Card number, name, uh, the address associated, security code, expiration date, all that good stuff. You'll pay, and it's gonna give you a big receipt with the location, the time you pick, their address, their phone number, all that good stuff. 
I have not had this happen, but I always err on the side of caution. Print it or save it to your phone and take it with you. That way when you get the get there, they can't go, well, we don't see that you paid. So print it and take it with you. Now, if you did not know, they are good for five years. All right, the permit is good for five years. Normally what I recommend to everybody, look at your expiration date when you get it, five years from that date. Go ahead in your calendar on your phone, tablet, and or computer. Count 75 to 90 days back. Set yourself a reminder. Okay. I set one at 75, 60, and 30 just to be on the safe side. All right. I renewed mine beginning of last year. It took about 55 days. All right. And right now, they're really, really busy. But give yourself some type of a reminder. Now, let's say you don't set that reminder and you get all the way up your day out from your CWP expiring. As long as you start the renewal process before it expires, keep that receipt with your permit, you can still carry concealed on your person. Only if you start it before it expires. After it expires, you would not be able to carry concealed on your person until you get your new permit. Only if you start it before it expires. I cannot stress that enough. All right. I'm not trying to get anybody put in jail. Only after, before, look, I'm getting myself confused. Only before it expires. If you get caught and it's after it expires, you do have 18 months to renew it online. After those 18 months, you have to print the paperwork up, fill it out, and send it in. Now, on that paperwork, it will ask for instructor name and certification number and my signature. That is only for new. You leave those blank for a renewal. At the top of that paperwork, there'll be a checkbox for renewal. You will check renewal and fill everything out. Now we're going to talk about renewing it. So if you renew it online and you're not past your uh, 18 months of that expiration date, you will come back here to Identigo if you saved it as a favorite. If not, go back to SLED's website. Second option, CWP renewal. Hit go. How to do it online, how to mail it in. Documentation if you have or want to mail it in. You can hit go, enter in these numbers, hit go, walks through the payment process. Very simple. And yes, it is $50 every time you renew it, but now if something's coming up and you're gonna be traveling, and you're not sure when you're gonna be back and you're maybe six months to a year from your expiration date, go ahead and renew it. You don't have to wait up until that fifth year or up until it expires. You can renew your CWP at any time. Okay. Replacements. So replacements, lost, stolen, damaged, name change, or address change. Do not get caught carrying your lot or you're carrying your gun with your license and your permit not having the same information. That falls under improper carry and you can be arrested. And right now, I know the DMV is pretty hectic with everything that's been going on. You will not be able to go in and, and change your address online and then get a permit. All right, we've had that happen because we couldn't get clear information on it. They will not accept it. They will not renew it. You have to have the physical license in hand before you can renew your permit. All right, but I've got another video up that talks about spots in your vehicle where you can have a gun in this state without a permit. You are allowed to keep it there until you get your license and your permit updated and matching. But last option, hit go. Same thing here. It's telling you how to do it online, how to mail it in, documentation if you're going to mail it in. Hit go. Enter in the numbers. Hit go. It will walk you through the application because you're having to update some information possibly. So if it's just damaged or something, Fill everything out just like it was, and then go through the payment process. Your renewals are only $5. Turnaround time is about two to three weeks. But that is how you do either a new, a renewal, or a replacement under the new process. And don't let anybody, again, don't let anybody tell you this is incorrect. If they are not a CWP instructor, they don't know. So don't be listening to them. And then sometimes your CWP instructors are wrong. Okay? Some don't like this. They're not very tech savvy. All right? They have their choice of either doing it this way or the old way. 
Me, I have no problem explaining this to people. It's made things a lot faster. The classroom has a shorter time. Okay, you're cutting down anywhere from two to three hours, depending on how many people in the class and how many people need to be fingerprinted. So, and this turn, it's cut down on the turnaround time. Again, right now, it's a little long just because of the amount of people getting permits. Okay, but this is how you either get yourself a new one, which you will still have to come in and do the class, or you renew it or do it, or a replacement. Okay, so this is where you will go, this is what you will do. If you ever have any questions at any point in time about anything, please feel free to reach out to me. If you're wanting to complain about our CWP process and how it's handled, I'm sorry, you're going to need to call SLED, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. They're the ones that dictate that. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. All right, at any time, again, have questions, all of our contact information will be linked in below along with all of our other social media stuff. But I cannot thank you enough for watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, all of my supporters. I really, really appreciate it. All right, please share this so people can understand what the new process is if they'd like to be part of it. And always, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.